Post trib moment number 33. Here he goes and tries to answer a question that I've brought up many times, and it stumps every single post-tribber that I've ever met. But Steve Anderson will not be dissuaded from continuing in his folly. He'll make a fool out of himself if any if he has to die trying. I mean, this this kid is just so ignorant of scripture; it's incredible. Let's watch this. A lot of times what those that believe in a pre-trib rapture will try and throw at you is this doctrine of, well, if those who take the mark of the beast are damned eternally, and if Christians are going to be here during the tribulation, then what happens if a Christian takes the mark of the beast? What's going to happen? Since we know that they can't lose their salvation, and we know that whoever takes the mark is damned, if Christians are going to be here, then how in the world is that going to work? And they'll use that to attack the post-trib rapture. Yeah, because it's a, good, it's a good question. Believers are sealed until the day of redemption. And th the answer that this little nut comes up with is just pathetic. Let's watch it. But here's the problem with their logic. Even those who believe in a pre-trib rapture must admit that there are going to be people saved on this earth during the tribulation because what they claim is that oh people are going to get saved after the rapture and and so forth the so-called tribulation saints is what they call it and so both pre-trib and post-trib believers acknowledge that there are going to be believers here during the tribulation okay now what he's assuming here is that both pre-trib rapture christians and post-trib saints both have eternal security and that is not what the bible teaches. You say, can you prove that? Oh, absolutely. I was hoping you would ask. Let me show you. How about in the book of James? James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at this. To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. When do the twelve tribes show up? They show up in Revelation chapter 7. You don't see the twelve tribes right now on the earth. They're not here. Okay, and I see Little Nutty Boy here has a, has a video later on uh, talking about the 144,000. I'm going to be interested to see that one, but I'll get to that later. But notice here in James chapter 2, it goes down and it says, uh, in talking about faith plus works, it says, What doth the prophet, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Look at that. Can faith save him? Yes. Faith can save him right now. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, no. Faith, can, faith alone cannot save a man. Oh, what heresy. Oh, what heresy. Isn't this awful? Oh, what terrible, terrible heresy. Let's look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints. Speaking about tribulation saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. End means there are two things. Keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus. Faith plus works. Let's go here to the book of Hebrews. I thought Paul said that there's neither Jew nor Gentile. You're all one in Christ. Why is a book written to Hebrews? Hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. Okay, let's look at verse 26 here. For if we sin willfully, willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Um, have you ever sinned willfully after that you have received the knowledge of the truth? Well, for, if you're a Christian, the answer would have to be yes. Paul wrote in Romans chapter 7, I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. The good that I would do, I do not. You know, the evil that I would not do, that's that I do. Okay, I apologize there. I had a phone call. Getting back to what I was saying. You see there, if you sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Look at this. But a certain, certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. If you sin willfully by taking the mark of the beast in the time of Jacob's trouble there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins you go to hell without a possibility of being saved 
The Bible does not teach eternal security for a tribulation saint. The only ones who are sealed in the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Jews. They're said to be sealed in Revelation chapter 7. Look it up. Continuing. So to say that that is an attack on the post-trib rapture, how is this going to work, doesn't make any sense when pre-tribbers believe the exact same thing, that there will be believers on this earth during the tribulation. It doesn't prove anything. Because, see, I just told you that the believers, the, the tribs, the post, or, uh, excuse me, the tribulation saints, they don't have eternal security. They are not sealed under the day of redemption, like a Christian is in the body of Christ, in the church age. He doesn't know the Bible. And the answer is very simple, that no Christian will take the mark of the beast. It's that simple. You say, oh, yeah, okay. No Christian would take the mark of the beast. A real Christian would never take the mark. Really? How many real Christians are messing around on Facebook right now? You know, which is funded by the CIA and the Department of Defense. How many Christians mess around with QR codes and iPhones and all this stuff that they're being tracked with? How many Christians go out and get themselves all numbered and all kinds of things? You know, don't tell me that real Christians wouldn't take the mark of the beast. Yes, they would. And watch what the little, you know, gymnastics that this little nut pulls off here as we continue. Well, what if they do? What if they do? Well, you know, what if aliens land and, and I'm abducted? I mean, you can have, say what if all day long. Well, if they landed and you were abducted, I'm sure that they'd probably realize they got a pretty bad deal and they'd kick you back out again. The Bible makes it clear that no joke. believer will take the mark of the beast because the Bible makes it very clear that no believer will be deceived by the Antichrist. Now, oh, really? No believer will be deceived by the Antichrist. No believer will take the mark. Um, chapter and verse. None provided. One. And number two, in order to receive the mark of the beast, the Bible teaches very clearly that you must worship the beast. It's always associated with worshiping the beast and receiving his mark. Now, I think part of understanding this is understanding the motivation behind the mark of the beast. The Bible says that the Antichrist is making war against the saints and seeking to overcome them. His goal is not to get Christians to take the mark of the beast. His goal is to kill all Christians. Oh, really? His goal is not to t get Christians to mark, take the mark of the beast. Well, first of all, your logic is faulty. There, there are no Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble. But look at what it says here in Revelation 13, verse 16. He causeth all. You know what the word all? all means it means everybody all to receive the mark to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell well the antichrist isn't going to go after christians to get them to take the mark of the beast he just wants to to kill them this guy doesn't know scripture and to persecute all Christians. So he doesn't want to give the mark out to anyone who is saved. Well, God... He doesn't want to give the mark out to anyone who's saved? What? Give me a break. I just showed you that he calls us all to take the mark. He doesn't say, oh, you're a Christian. Okay, I won't, you know, bother you. I'll just kill you. He doesn't say that. What a, not, what a bunch of nonsense. He says that no one who is saved is going to be deceived by the Antichrist. Well, think about this. What if there's a way that the Antichrist will know whether you're lying or not? You know, let's say you go down to your local wherever to get the mark of the beast. You know, would it be far-fetched to believe that they will have a way of determining whether you, your worship for the Antichrist is really uh, bona fide, whether you really do pledge allegiance unto the beast or whatever? We are entering fantasy land here. There's no scripture for any of this. Absolutely not. This is just all conjecture, just all his little musings in his mind. Whatever you have to do to get this mark. You see, today, there are all kinds of technologies coming out that involve brain scans. And you say, oh, come on, Pastor Anderson, this sci-fi stuff. Well, look, lie detectors have been out for a long time. And I understand that lie detectors are not very accurate. But they have been used, and they have been somewhat accurate at times. And so as that technology expands and moves forward, I don't think it's that far-fetched at all to think that there will be some kind of a test 
some kind of a, 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 a brain scan or some kind of a, you know, super advanced polygraph system. Oh, brother. Chapter and verse on any of this? No, of course not. That can determine whether you really are uh, one who, who, who worships the beast and believes on him. And let's say a Christian just decides, well, I've got to buy or sell. I'm going to go bite the bullet and get the mark of the beast so that I can do this. You know, when they get down there and try to do it, you know, some kind of an alarm is going to go off saying, hey, this is not legitimate. You don't, you're not one of us. You're not a true patriot. And they'll be arrested and they will be beheaded. So, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, back to Hebrews. You say a, 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 a true Christian, a, you know, will we'll make it a true believer, goes down and they try to get the mark and they, the scanner, the brain scanner goes off and they can't take the mark because it doesn't work. You know? How do you explain this? Sinning willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Uh, how do you explain that? Trib saints, tribulation saints that go and take the mark are damned. And there's going to be some kind of brain scanner that says, Oh no, I'm sorry, you're saved, you can't take the mark. So really they'll just be showing up for their own death. Absolutely absurd.